Hi, everybody. This is Arthur from ArthurEaseYourMind.com and Arthur Ease Your Mind here at YouTube. And my second guest is Andre. Hi, everyone. Astrology. Oh, uh, Astrology Alert. And I'm very pleased. And I was teasing him. I said, I feel like Taylor Swift did a, a teeny at Taylor Swift concert because I'm a fan. What a nice compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope I, I hope I'll live up to it. You will. You will. And uh, we had some interesting conversations before we started the show based on one of the questions here. And it was from, it was from Kathy asking, do you believe animals also have birth charts? I do. Is that correct? Yeah. And so we're discussing that. And I think it's a great question. Yeah. To which I said, yes, they do. And uh, I happen to have had the direct experience between um, the late 90s and 2016, a little cat, you know, the female cat in my life, whose day of birth I knew, not the time, but you know, with the day of birth, you have quite a bit to work with, including a moon range, so you can get a sense of where the moon might have been. But the point being that I noticed over the years really strong correlations with her chart uh, for example, there was a period when she got into a lot of fights and, and she had, you know, would be in the cat hospital. At one point, her cranium was actually pierced. I mean, it was really, mm. really bad, but it, it was because of, at the time, I think it, there were Pluto transits squaring her. So then that was why. And all the way to her last, you know, when she passed, there was a correlation in her chart. And there was one of those uh, points in... in you know, my astrology trajectory where I wasn't looking at her chart at that time, but saw it afterward and it was so clear there was a major opposition, which is what you would expect at a moment of old age because she was really, really old. And by, by that point in her, in her life, it was really better for her to, to you know, leave the earth plane. But yeah, long, long answer to say 100% that animals, animals are sentient beings. It, it, it's the idea that astrology, the moment in time, you're looking at a chart, there's a start, and then things go from there, which is why countries have charts, or why people will focus on the start of something being important, where you can look at something later to see what might be going on. And, and I, something that comes popped into my mind is the first program that was ever aired by Fox News reveals why they got hit with such a big monetary punishment uh, I think it was last year yeah because of something you see in the chart and you can see from that chart that they're going to probably take another one you know the smartmatic thing is likely to uh, hit them again because of something that you know you think well why would you because that was the start that's the first time they go on the air so then you read that chart um, so that's uh, their birth that's their birth yeah exactly much better, I think, than, you know, when people will do things like, when was it signed and filed? Uh, you get more from something that is more public. The, an example of this is the U.S. chart that I favor is the Sibley chart, because that chart is the chart of the announcement and the public celebration of the U.S. as a country. You know, people gathered in the square, made a lot of noise. And that chart seems to vibrate to the origin of the U.S., rather than saying, oh, no, they were all meeting in secret in some dungeon, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning and they signed. No, that, that's not a chart that I would use. Use a chart that makes more sense around taking in the totality of the energies, right? Like so, the but but once again, though, it's the idea, what's the origin, and then, and then go from there. And so, circling back, animals, 100%, and they can be cats, rabbits, chickens, you know, whatever. Whatever you can get a birth time, you know, and the the amazing thing would be is if you if you had the I don't know what it is, the good fortune, the the uh, insight, if you happen to uh, have a an animal in your life, like a cat or a dog, and you know the birth time, you can say, no, it was to the minute. Now you've got something you can really work with because you have even more information. You, know? mm -hmm. you have changing ascendance and things like that that. Uh, you can't really study without the precise birth time. So, yeah. Yeah. And we're also talking about 
I have a twin sister and I mentioned to Andre and we we're talking about how just by being a couple minutes different, how the charts are not the same. They're no, similar, but not the same. No, they they change uh, in that it's the it's the rising degrees. So charts are anchored on on the eastern horizon. It's the idea of think of the Earth right now as we speak. The Earth is spinning toward the east at a thousand miles an hour, even though we don't feel it. It's moving toward the east, and because it moves toward the east, planets look like they're rising. They're not actually rising. The Earth is falling, and then the planets rise, but that eastern point where the earth uh you know links to the east directly with a horizontal line that's your rising degree at birth so if someone is born minutes later the earth has already fallen a little more so the degrees are a little different even so though twins will share a lot of a lot of psychological feelings even events at times but their life trajectories will diverge in part because of that difference, but also because the other side of astrology is that is that what happens to you isn't just faded, you know, where you're, it's written in stone. There's there's a sense in which, particularly twins do this, they embody different parts of their chart. Who knows what the reason is? Genetic, sibling rivalry. They start to do different things, and then because of doing those different things with their chart, like focusing more on one part of the chart to another, for example, if you see a chart where there is extroverted energy in one place and introverted in another, one of the two will usually take on more of one or the other, right? So then their vibe, their aura, their, their you know, magnetic field changes, and so they attract different things into their life, right? But this also tells you that it's so important for a person to you know, work with that, realizing that any person, whether or not you're a twin, your chart is waiting for you to embody the planets in a better way. And that's why I, I call my astrology proactive rather than predictive. Mm -hmm. Predictive is great. But proactive is even more important because if you're changing how you align with your planets, you yourself will change your own fate for the better, you know, presumably. I mean, you can change it for the worse, too. Like, for instance, our ex-president is notoriously good at this. You know, he always complicates things and finds different ways to commit more crimes so he can attract more charges and all the rest. That would be the wrong way to go. The right way to go is to become more harmonious so that you can attract a better fate. Yeah. So that's the that's the long answer to that. Mm. It's a nice answer. Thank you. <laughs> we also had a lot of questions here. One was about Biden's chart. Mm -hmm. What does his chart look like during the campaign and election? Now, as a psychic, I say he's getting in. So I'm not worried about that. He's getting in. I mean, he's winning. He's winning. He's Good. Winning. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing with Biden is that, you know, first of all, there's a pattern in Biden's chart that really complicated his presidency. It was right around when when the Afghanistan debacle happened. And, you know, in case you say, oh, it's all his fault. Not really. That was created by Trump. He needed to get out. In the end, it's it's it was the logical thing to do. The U.S. has been there for two decades you know, uh, not accomplishing anything anymore, really. So it had to happen. But the timing wasn't the best timing. Most astrologers would have said, don't do it now. But then, like I was telling you before we started recording, many times in politics, you don't have any option. You, you may have to do something at a time, which isn't great. Anyway, bottom line is this. You go back to that point. He's got all these planets in Scorpio, one after the other. So Saturn runs through all those planets, the rest of 21, all of 22, into the beginning of 23, and then it switched to Pisces. The problem is that uh, Biden is early Sagittarius rising, right? He's, his planets are all in the 12th sign, and then Sagittarius rises. So then all of 23, he's getting pressure to that rising degree I was telling you about earlier, that thing crossing the eastern horizon. So... Between that and the fact that there's yet another planet a little bit later, his Saturn position, bottom line is that what's going to happen here is that as we go into the spring and around March or April, there's a shift in, in, so that now the Saturn gets deeper into Pisces and it starts to support all his planets. The energy changes, situation improves you know, measurably. 
whereas in contrast Saturn's situation is getting worse then going from the spring because Saturn is getting deeper and deeper into Pisces moving in on Trump's sun and moon which is not a good thing especially in the context of being uh, you know in the midst of what is it 91 felony counts 91 yeah not a good not a good thing at all you know the middle of the year for Trump is is brutal totally brutal but Biden's is, is improving. Now, it is true, though, I will admit it's true that Biden has pressures next year. And some of the um, videos that are going around by some astrologers, they focus a lot on his health because there is uh, pressure to that part of his chart. And the thing is, it may show up as health for Biden. It may. There may be some event that happens. But I wouldn't necessarily count on that either because that, that house in the chart is both health events but also just plain hard work and pressure, which if you're in a campaign like this, yeah. of course he's going to be feeling it. And the thing about Biden is that really when all is said and done, he's a pretty lucky guy. He's got this way of, of and I think it's because he's born with a really nice Jupiter trine to his planets. So he's got a way of, you know, even though he takes a lot of criticism, he keeps moving forward and you notice, for instance, there was all that gloom and doom in 2022. The election turned out quite well. And I think he's going to pull another rabbit out of the hat one more time in, in 2024. Because if you compare his to, to uh, Trump's, and that's all you need to compare, right? Even if you say, yeah, uh, Biden has pressures. But by the way, what politician is going to run for office with a chart without pressures? They're exactly. always there. Obama had them in 08 and he, he won the election handily, right? Mm -hmm. So if you compare Biden to Trump, Biden's is much, much better, much better, including another thing too that is very interesting, which is that the chart that is really rocking in 24 is Kamala's. Right. Why? Why is her chart looking so strong? You could speculate maybe that Biden has to drop out and then she carries the banner. That's possible, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like it to me. It feels to me like maybe later in, in, but not not immediately that she would be president or anything like that. But you want someone like that on your ticket because her chart is so strong, which is signaling being happy in right. November of 2024. Well, the last show I did, my prediction was that and I've been saying this for a while now. I don't see Trump, quote unquote, crossing the finish line. And for some, I keep on getting Nikki Haley, maybe. Someone different. For the Republican Party. And I just keep on saying, and people ask me, well, if if she gets in, and I said, Biden's still winning. Mm -hmm. and well, I mean, I said, by the way, that, that's not a, I mean, when you think about it, so you're, you're putting forth a psychic prediction. So yes. that stands on its own. But if you think logically, step leave the astrology and the psychic, put it aside, just realize that whoever is running for the GOP has to defend indefensible positions. It's right. very well, difficult well, to do that. I mean, when you have more women, women are vote more than men. And when you have women in the situation as a block that they're in, they're yeah. going to be very angry and they're going to vote against you. And she cannot, cannot go out and say, okay, I agree. Women should have full choice. You can't do that because then a large portion of her base will be upset, right? So she, she's still MAGA, place. no matter what. She's still she may yeah, say she, eloquently, but she's still MAGA. Exactly. I mean, MAGA or like MAGA pretend. That's where some positions you have to follow, even though you know you, you for sure you know she'd want to say. You know, just like by the way, the most amazing one is Trump. Trump is the engineer of all this because he brought in Gorsuch and he brought in uh, Annie Comey Barrett and he brought in. Um, uh, Kavanaugh, right? Yeah, no. So he puts the three, the three in there. He knows now that he wishes he could say, no, 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 we don't want to, women should have choice, but he can't do that either, right? Because again, he'll anger the base. So no matter who you put there, even if you put a, the most sensible person in that whole group is Chris Christie, he's actually their smartest guy. He's not going to win. But if he were to run, he can't say, you know, let's just give everyone choice because then he'll lose water. So they're really in a bind. And by the way, I, I do agree with you that when I look at the charts, Nikki Haley, there's no time of birth for her, but there's enough there to suggest that she's probably the strongest of that mm -hmm. group because she's on a 
Pluto Sun conjunction and Pluto Sun tends to be very empowering and and in the meantime at least until the middle of the year the Jupiter is also helping her so that's two really really strong forces I don't know after that though that, that, that's where you get a a bit of a thing where she may be the one getting the nomination or it could be that then she fizzles you know when you get right. into the middle of the year which is what you would expect if you're running and then it doesn't work out right yeah. And what I've also been saying is that as a psychic, that I said that Biden does get in, Kamala is by his side, but not holding him up. She's just by his side, you know, yeah. so his partners and, and that's what you need. So I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling in 2025, uh, the country starts taking a different approach to humanity, for lack of a better word. Yeah, well, that that also isn't uh, a bad. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree because because the more we go to work toward twenty five and twenty six, the more we we get uh, big planetary shifts. There have been, for instance, uh, Neptune has been in Pisces since twenty eleven, which in part is responsible for both the rise of good things like more and more information on video, like on YouTube. It's remarkable mm -hmm. what you can find now. I've said this quite a few times on, on, on videos, ironically, you know, that but explaining that back in the day, if I needed information, you know, go to the occult shop and you're hunting down things and it's, it's really difficult. And now you can find it in video format. You can find it in audio format. The information flow is phenomenal. That's good. The problem is that the other side of that is disinformation. And so all this make it up, you know, fake news, all of that is Neptune yeah. too. So Neptune getting out is a major shift. Then you have Saturn getting out in 2025 as well, goes into, into Aries, doesn't quite do it till 26 completely, but still there's a shift there. Pluto will be in a new sign. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. And that is the perfect symbol of the rise of fascism because Capricorn is the government sign. So if you put Pluto there, this happened in the 30s, it was on the opposite sign. So that polarity there, and fascism go really well together, but that now it's in this last, you know, ember, so to speak. It's just about to leave the the, the region. So that's three uh, major planets, and then even Uranus will switch in 26. So multiple shifts in planetary energy shift the energy. And the thing around more humane and you know more connected to the group, literally, because that's what that's what Aquarius is. Pluto and Aquarius is enough. To, to suggest that, that it is not fertile territory for fascism. It's the opposite, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's more toward the group. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Let's mm -hmm. just say that. Yeah. Um, we did also get questions, obviously, about what's going on in the Middle East mm. and um, what the charts are saying about that. Well, the Middle East, if you if you mean the the Israeli yeah. conflict, you can see it in the Israeli chart itself. That's a chart that it there's a four to four thirty p.m. depending on how you want to do it. Was it when they started the meeting or was it when they proclaimed <laughs> Israel is born? So either way, it's a late Libra rising chart, right? Uh, and that means that the Pluto energy is hammering on that until it gets out of Capricorn, which it doesn't until 2025. So on that level, on that alone, plus another one too, that the the Israeli sun is, is currently experiencing a Uranus conjunction, which is another major, you know, first of all, the shock of what happened, that's very Uranian, and the idea of being kept in an unstable type of situation. It's going to last a while, but I'm suspecting that somehow in the spring, there should be a shift to at least settle it enough that it'll stop being the very thing, by the way, this is why, you know, people are saying, why is Biden having such a hard time? Biden's numbers dropped a lot right around when the conflict started, because a, a lot of Democrats, are not happy with his response because people are taking sides. I'm for Israel or I'm for Palestine. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly when his numbers dropped. And I can't explain why. I don't know what the reason is in the spring, why things get better. 
but I would imagine that the conflict will improve in some way. I don't know how either. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. Well, psychically, but... what I've, I don't mean to interrupt you, but psychically what I was picking up is the ceasefire. I feel there will be a ceasefire, but towards the end of January and February, when it will be official. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because then that suggests going into the spring, if something is calmer and you're not getting all these crazy stories with babies and women and, you know, hospitals, this is not cool. This drives people crazy. Oh, yeah. So then the energy would improve and then it kind of goes to the background. But there was a question, I think, in the list you showed me where someone were, the question was, when uh when is it uh you know when is it going to all be resolved uh, as in like one, i think one, one of the questions said well when are they going to kick out this government because you know then there's the netanyahu thing oh I yeah think netanyahu is toast i think he is toast it's just that uh, he may be a victim of the you know going into the 2025 period so expecting it to all be perfect in 24 is, is almost certainly unrealistic. I, I, no, I, don't, I, don't I, I don't see that. But I also yeah. see him leaving. I mean, you know, I do see him leaving. I was, I was uh, no later than June or July. Yeah, that, that would make sense. I mean, the, the thing is that his approval rating is really low because Netanyahu, in a way, is the cause of all this because he was really lax in, you know, the very thing, like the reason people want often, almost always, why do they want right-wing governments? Because the right-wing promises better security. Well, if you can't take care of that, there goes your whole argument. And mm -hmm. that was really lax. I mean, some of the stuff that is coming out, you know, how can Israel be sleeping on the job? They're the most, you know, supposedly the most <laughs> intensely secure nation. Well, on multiple levels, they were letting Hamas uh, roll in the money. No one stopped that. They had you know, warning, say this is happening, oh, whatever. And then it happens. So uh, it is really hard to come back from that, you know, and right. at some point. And so if you say, yeah, I, I could see that 100%, because the reason being Netanyahu is a, another, speaking of Libra, late Libra, the Pluto is there uh, squaring. And during 2024, it's still in play. And so the last hit that he gets is at the end of the year, so I would say either what you say or the end of the year, but somewhere in there, he, mm -hmm. he needs, yeah, he, he would be, you know, that it would be the end of his, of his career. And what do you feel about Navalny? Yeah, I, I looked at him too. And Navalny, what is curious about Navalny is that his chart, and again, this is one with no time. There's just a day mm -hmm. of his birth. So in that sense, you know, there could be something in his rising degrees that completely changes the interpretation. But Navalny, to, to me, uh, it feels like he's tied to the 25 period in that the situation improves for him a lot as it's getting worse for Putin, which is one of the reasons I've always felt optimistic about the Ukraine situation, because you see Putin's chart get much worse in 2025, 2026 where by the middle of next year, Zelensky's is picking up, is feeling better. And so is Navalny, by the way. Navalny is Gemini. So Jupiter going into Gemini is helpful, you know, to, to yeah. that sign. But he may not feel it until the next year because Jupiter is still in Gemini this, the first half of 25. And a lot of this is pivoting around the U.S. election. The U.S. election is critical, right? Mm -hmm. Because if the U.S. were to be so psychotic as to reelect Trump, which I don't think will happen, I'm, I'm certain it won't happen, but the point is, if that were to happen, it would totally upend the international right. order because Trump Trump is basically a total sleaze. He's ready to give Ukraine to Putin, you know? Right. He wants to get out of NATO and, uh, you know, upend the international order. Uh, but since that's not gonna happen, then a lot of this is tied to the, the turn into 2025. And in that sense, it improves for Navalny, but remember, you gotta, if you have a birth chart, there may be something in there that, I mean, right. who knows? Because they're, they're so brutal in Russia that uh, how do you even know that he'll be alive at that well, point? Psychically, what I've been picking up is he's still alive, that he was on the hunger strike. I feel they took him out, put him in a hospital and put IVs in him so he wasn't going to die because they don't want him to be a martyr. Mm. And I was saying in about three weeks, he's going to show up again. So we'll three see weeks what from now? Three weeks from now. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. 
And I've been saying, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm saying it anyway, that I kept on psychically picking up. I don't feel Putin's going to be around after the 1st of April. And that's no April Fool's joke. Of this, oh, in next year. Well, th that that is a possibility. One of the things about Putin's chart is that he's got, like our disgraceful ex-president, he has a lot of health angles in that chart. And health angles, the, or, the older you are, the more threatening they are. And there were quite a few signals, even just in the, you know, normal media, you could, you'd see mm -hmm. strange things like uh, tremors and, and uh, he, his face looks really puffy. That's usually a sign you're taking steroids or doing something right. where you're treating a condition. This is not good. And, and, and in his chart, he's in this long swath where these health angles, they're not letting up for years, you know, they continue, they, they started and continue, including even this moment in time, it looks like he's doing better, but even that is tied to his health and, and, a, and a potential breakdown. So yeah, I agree with you. It goes really well with that kind of outcome, for sure. And I've been calling, I've been calling them Tweedle P and Tweedle T. What, what does that mean? Tweedle Putin and Tweedle Trump, like Tweedle D, Tweedle Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, 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 no. I know. See, this is the thing that uh, Putin Putin has a cluster of planets in Libra, and Trump passes Jupiter in Libra, and so there's a you know an immediate connection. Even though Trump Trump will if it's if it's he likes dictators, you know Trump wants yeah. to be a dictator, so he's he really likes Kim Jong Un too, and there it's more of a square. Which by the way is why back in the day he was first cursing him out and calling him Rocket Man, but then. He drew, you know, brought him in and uses him as, you know, Road love letters. Is, yeah, no, I know exactly, exactly. So, but yeah, no, that that uh, that's uh, interesting with Putin. And uh, uh, again, I my feeling is that this is Trump misreading. He misreads the situation, even though he, he tries to tell people how wise he is. You know, his gut level, this and that. The man is an idiot. You know, start to. Think of it from that perspective, it and you'll understand why he does the things he does, and why he says he's a winner. He's been losing since 2016. He yeah. anything he touches, the GOP loses, but they're still following him. So okay, you know, it's like it's like putting your money in a team that keeps losing. At a certain point, stop gambling on that team because you're losing your money. It's simple, you know. Well, isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over, thinking looking for different outcome? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, and by the way, recent elections, you know, people talk about polls. The best polls are what have people been doing when they vote? And when they've been voting, they keep voting for Democrats in places right. they shouldn't be voting for Democrats. That ought to scare you if you're a GOP. When you lose a race in Jacksonville to, a, you know, a, a, some guy gets elected and he's Democratic. Why? Because they're telling you we don't like this fascist, you know, this yeah. insane talk. That's the real poll. And as far as the election, the election starts soon, like in the spring of next year or maybe right. uh, late winter. Uh, you know, someone was saying, I heard a pundit say that in 1983, Ronald Reagan had the exact same polls as Biden has now. And he, he you know, wiped the floor with his opponent in 1984. But he was really in a struggle at that point. And then by the next year, the energy completely shifted. So remember, everybody was saying it was going to be President Romney. Yeah, right. Yeah. The year yeah. before President Romney. Sure, sure. Well, well President uh, President Dukakis, you got up on the on the right. you know same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you got to wait for the situation to develop. Uh, John Kerry was also leading George Bush by a lot in mm -hmm. the year prior, because you know people were not happy with George Bush. But then when the comparison came, and especially when both parties throw the kitchen sink at each other and he did the swift boat thing on him you know yeah exactly exactly so so the thing is you you, you have to i think you're you know your your um your channel is actually it, it it holds the clue to all this ease your mind just ease your mind relax into the <laughs> <Just wait. laughs> actually i tell my clients no sometimes i know you want to lose your mind but no you gotta step back and just you know realize we're all in this together yeah, exactly. Right. But, but but the idea of easing the mind is, is that it never helps to be tight. So easing the mind is a central, central spiritual principle that everyone should join immediately. 
Thank because, you. Because even if even if you have something to worry about, worrying about it is not going to help you. You if you want a solution, ease your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Now I realize that sometimes that's challenging. Of course. Oh, of course it is. But if you train yourself to be that way, things tend to improve. And this would also be true even of the imagine the entire political class, which by the way outnumbers the GOP by a lot. That's right. why they keep losing and why they're constantly trying to rig the voting and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So if that class of people stop worrying and fretting, relax, ease your mind, vote, encourage other people to vote. That's all you can do, you know? Don't drive yourself crazy. A lot of things will go better as a result. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I choke on my halo too. I mean, I, I worry a lot sometimes, you know, so I have to remind myself. Yeah, but... of course, of course. We all, we all do. I mean, uh, but, but I guess in a way that's the work, right? That's the, the so-called good work of life is to realize that that's, that's the way to do it, which in astrology, when you do that, it, what you're doing is you are liberating Saturn and Jupiter, the two biggest planets in the in the solar system by far. They're so dominant in their power. When you do that, you use the Saturn focus, you focus on relax and open, and then you get the guidance that you need to do the right thing and your life improves, right? So that's true for everyone all the time. It's a, it's a way to immediately improve your chart if you want to. You know, oh, yeah thinking that you owe it to life to worry. No, that's not a good good plan, you know, no. What do you feel for Ginny Thomas? Well, are, are you asking me personally or astrologically? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like- uh, I mean, I've been predicting for the last two years that Clarence was gonna have to step down for health reasons, but, and I felt he's gonna have to step down before the election. I mean, I've been saying that, I felt it was gonna be this October that he was gonna step down. I felt it's gonna be next October. And a lot has to do with her, you know, and he did recuse himself from the Eastman thing, I think the first time in history, but I just feel that Ginny is just his, you know, his downfall. And I just feel she's going to, she's going to do some time if she doesn't. But do you think though, that when I looked at hers, well, first of all, uh, uh, the disclaimer is another chart with no time. Thomas's time is known. I don't know how it came out. I think it was in the Georgia Bureau of Records. There's a chart with a time mm -hmm. for him, not for her. So hers, what I see without a time is that she's definitely under pressure all of 24 because it's there. Uh, it's just that beyond that, I don't get a ton of visibility. Are you saying that you feel that she would be, that she's going down in 24? Like literally, because the, it's hard for me to grasp. How... I think she's going to be one of the, unnamed co-conspirators right right but my and my i thought friend... a lot of that stuff's going to come out after the first um after the first quarter of 2024 names are going to start coming out yeah well I, that, that, I would welcome that i would welcome that the way i've been focusing and i could be totally wrong i and i'm probably doing this more through the politics or the logic of politics and law enforcement that uh what's happened what happened with Merrick Garland is he was trying to do from the bottom up and which he should have done it from the bottom up and from the top down. That would have been a better approach. Jack Smith is all top down. Mm -hmm. Jack Smith, after he gets Trump, then he's going to start working on MTG and, uh, and Gates and Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Thomas, these people that pretty clearly were messing around with illegal things during that election right. and they left breadcrumbs. It's just that if you go after everyone at the same time, it's usually not a good strategy. So. No, it's one it, you get. The, it's like cut the head of the snake. Yeah, yeah. You know, or so, Hydra, whatever it is. But yeah, well, that that would be good though. That that, that would be a, a very welcome development if we started seeing, you know, more than just Giuliani. Giuliani is an example. Is and or maybe Mark Meadows. They're they're caught in the tornado right now, but if more people are brought into it, yeah, even better. Yeah, be and I also felt that MTG, I always call MTG my tragic girlfriend, that, uh, <laughs> that, um, or Little Povenhoves, that's my other nickname for him. <laughs> but, but um, that Hunter Biden is going to go after her big time as well with what she, you know, the revenge porn and all that kind of stuff. After her? Yeah. For putting yeah, well, pictures out there and everything. What do you feel about Hunter Biden, by the way? Yeah, that's a great I, segue. I think he's going to be okay, but... Yeah, I was about to say that that's a segue into Hunter Biden. Yeah, no, I already said in a different video, and I'll repeat it here, that Hunter Biden, he's been through it. His chart is moving in a 
much better direction. Like if I were his lawyers, I would say, get it in court immediately. Get in there and don't delay. Do the mm -hmm. opposite of Trump because next year, much, much better. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I'm, I think to me, it's a nothing burger. Yeah, <laughs> that will go nowhere. And uh, if I were him, too, I would persistently pound on. Hey, I want to I want to testify. Why don't you guys yeah, call me in? Exactly. You know, like the, these guys, the GOP thrives on repeating nonsense. Just repeat the truth to them. That's the the way to 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 battle, especially when you know you have the high ground. And he definitely right. does. So yeah. I've always said when it started is like it's a, this too shall pass. It may seem like a kidney stone, but it's still going to pass. True. All this stuff, Very true. everything that we're going through right now. Oh, no, to, absolutely. I mean, I, that's where you see near term cycles and bigger ones. Like part of the reason I don't think that things will settle down even after the election is that oh, yeah. the problem is that the cycles do have this this uh, connection to the Civil War period. That's why the country is so divided. So uh, and part, of, part of the problem is that the GOP, I think, is operating under the delusion that because they're losing closely, that it means maybe they'll have a chance to win the next one, which isn't really true. But it means that if, if they lose, they continue to be upset. And so I wouldn't be surprised if 25 was still a pretty rocky year around that, even if things you know, are better, broadly speaking, by not having a, a fascist in power, uh, you, you'll get a lot of objections, you know, and a lot of, and there might even be some violence too, you know, uh, don't take that out of the, out of the equation. No, I, I always felt there's pockets of, of crazies. There always will be. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the, the makeup of everything. Mm -hmm. True. So I don't know. It's just. Oh, here's another one. It's from Andrea. How do you both see recreational marijuana legal nationwide? <laughs> well, my feeling on that one is that, and I'll admit this is more my attunement to politics. I've I've you know really followed the politics in the U.S. for about twenty three, twenty four years, and my feeling is that. It's one of those issues that federally, the government, the federal government doesn't have any great um, incentive to to make that a national thing, and that, I think they'll leave it to the states. I think with marijuana, you'll see it increase state by state. But if you're hoping that I don't know Louisiana or or um, Alabama legalize it, you're probably going to be waiting a while. I would suggest to you if you if you want to smoke Ooh. marijuana move to a different state <laughs> because, you know, in, in, in my state, because it's a progressive state, at least on account of the power of the cities, because if you go into the mountains, it's as Trumpy as can be. Yeah, but, but that's where they grow it. Well, that's true. But here in where I live, there's a dispensary every, you know, 300 meters or whatever. It's oh, just, I'm in Los Angeles. I go to 7-Eleven next door, you know, and right next there, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I, I would think... It's still years away, yeah. if not maybe more than a decade before you see uh, a national. Th that's going to take a while, in my opinion. Right. Well, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they tried to make abortion the state thing, and now they're trying to make it a federal thing again, and it's not going to happen. Yeah, well, the thing with abortion, though, abortion is more, that is a much bigger candidate for a national oh, yeah. position because there, the public uh, writ large, is not for what they're doing. They, you know, mm. they're, they, they, when you start getting above sixty and above seventy, in some cases, that's not a good plan for any party to mm. adopt a minority position. You know, and you're asking for a moment where you get enough help to pass some kind of you know important legislation to. to well, I feel it's going to become you know for the people. Yeah, you know, it's all going to be turned around again once the Democrats all get in. I also feel that there's going to, I keep on predicting in four to five years that there's going to be a change in the Supreme Court where when they originally voted to have nine Supreme Court justices, we had nine appellate courts and now we have 13. And I've been saying that I feel within four or five years, there's going to be 13 Supreme Court justices. Biden wouldn't do it this time, but I feel down the line, it will, it will happen. Well, I mean, when you think about it, if you have a, unless they change the term limits, if you have a Supreme Court with life, 
long appointments, hmm. obviously the more judges, the better, because if you have less judges, then you can get into these situations where you've got a court that is tilted way to the right when the country is not where the, where the court is. Right. And if you had more judges, you eliminate that possibility because more judges spreads out the risk. And, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Not, not to mention that, I mean, the GOP has manipulated that and totally ripped off the Democratic Party with the way they behaved, you know, when uh, appointing judges like Lindsey Graham. I mean, this, this guy, I mean, a total hypocrite. He looked in the camera and said, oh, no, I would never do that. And then he just did it. So, you know, yeah. uh, they're, they're, they're the champions that doing the opposite of what they say. Well, it's like Mitch McConnell, you know, yeah. responsible yeah. for all that. Yeah, uh, exactly. So what do you, what do you feel people need to know? What do they need to know? As, yeah, astrologically or whatever. Other than easing their mind. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if you if you want to focus on the more difficult side, you'd say 2024. Yeah, you got to put on your seatbelt. This is going to intensify. But is that really news? What election can you point to in the last many years that wasn't anything other than a total circus and high tension and so forth. Maybe the 2008, when Obama was elected, I, I think it was more uh, more intense and more uh, challenging in the uh, Democratic primary then. But by the time we got into the general, it was pretty well known that you know, Obama was, was really dominant. But other than that, it's been high tension the whole time. So that's going to happen. You can already pretty much anticipate it. I think the thing to do though is figure out how to stay calm, relax, stay out of the negativity. Negativity is not useful. It just isn't. Yeah, you know? yeah that's the that's the key. Uh, which uh, people, I think, kind of almost everyone knows this, right? But does everyone practice it? You know, and no. so every time you catch yourself drifting into, you know, uh, I'm on the ledge, I'm gonna fall off. Pull yourself. You know, I mean, if some if you need someone to do it for you, great. But even better if you do it to yourself. You know, it's okay. Get right. off the ledge. Just come back. Calm down, and you know, stay stay with the plan. Because if you are on the sensible, progressive side of things, we have the advantage. We outnumber them. We just gotta focus. That's it. You know, because if you think about this two separately, if you go back to all these elections and during the 21st century, all the losses have been Democratic undervotes, including Trump in 2016. That was lax behavior on the part of Democrats. Mm -hmm. They, how is it that Hillary had way less votes than Obama, you know, in that election? That's not good because they assume, oh yeah, she'll win. I'm not even going to vote. One of the reasons you always vote is that you want to win as big as possible. You should mm -hmm. never just win by a little. When you win big, then you can implement things. That's how Obama was able to, you know, bring in healthcare because right. he had a big majority. It was tough, but that totally transformed people's lives. You know. And you do that with big majorities. It's so important that everyone show up and not just assume, ah, I'm not going to do it. Or even, you know, fall prey to, well, I'm only going to vote for them if they're a woman or if they're white or if they're black. You always vote for the Democrat if you're a Democrat. Right. That's how you do it. I mean, uh, if, that, if that would be the case, uh, people, you know, would realize what the task is and it'll make 2024 a lot easier, let's say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And thank you for being here today. Oh, no, it was a pleasure. Yeah, it was a pleasure. I really appreciate it. This is, this is really fun. Yeah. So everyone, go to Andre's channel, like, subscribe, and get a, oh, get a reading you. with him. I, He's I really good. That. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And go to his website. What is your website? Astrology. Oh, well, the, the website is myname.com, but the, the uh, YouTube channel is called Astrology Alert. And you will see in the about area where my website is and all that if you want to, you know, pursue it any further. It's there as well. Well, I put it in my, it'll be in the about section for this. So. Great. Well, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. Well, thank you. And everybody, thank you for stopping by. And hopefully we'll do this again sometime. All right. Bye, everyone. Right. Pleasure. So thank you. Bye-bye.